The somnambulist creeps down slanted and twisted alleyways, past oblique windows. He kills on command, recently awoken from the cabinet of Dr. Kiligari. Hello and welcome to 100 Years of Cinema. We'll be taking a look at one film a year from 1915 to track the evolution of film over the last century. When asked to picture an early horror film, most people probably think of images from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. With its warped, painted sets, creepy atmosphere and vivid imagery, the film is iconic of horror in the silent era. Directed in 1920 by Robert Werner, it's probably one of the most influential and highly discussed films in cinema history. The story is told from the point of view of our hero Francis. In the beginning, he sits on a bench, discussing the strange and terrible events that happen to him. Dr. Caligari is a travelling showman that comes to the town of Holstenwall for the annual fair, bringing with him his exhibit, Caesar the Somnambulist, a man who's been asleep for 23 years. Waking only at the voice of Dr. Caligari, he's able to answer any question. When Francis's friend, Alan, asks how long he'll live, Caesar's chilling reply is, until dawn. That night, Alan is killed in his sleep. After a series of murders that rock the town, a police investigation is launched to catch the man responsible, and all roads point to Dr. Caligari, who works at the local mental asylum. In the film's final twist, it's revealed that Francis, who's been telling us this story, is actually an inmate at the asylum, and Dr. Caligari is the director. The film is considered one of the most important works of German Expressionism. The goal of most films from early cinema was to capture life as it really was. Expressionism ran in a direct and deliberate contrast to this, seeking not to present the world as it was, but using images, acting and lighting to express a subjective perception of the world, particularly exploring emotional and mental states through its imagery. Set designer Walter Ryman used twisted buildings and streets, incongruous angles, shadows painted in disharmony from their light source to not only reflect the mental state of the protagonist, but also as an expression of the tension, distrust and anxiety of post-World War I Germany. Caligari wasn't the first film to use expressionism, but it was the first film to use such startling and extreme images. One of the major ways that the cabinet of Dr. Caligari advanced cinema was in its use of theme, set and story as allegory. The film doesn't just tell a story, it's a visual representation of the German people's feelings towards the German war government and the following Weimar Republic. The film deals with themes of control and subservience. Caligari is first the cruel master of Caesar the Somnambulist, ordering him to kill, and then later the director of the mental asylum in which Francis is imprisoned. He is representative of the German wartime government, sending the young to die in their trenches. Caesar is emotionless and without personality, ready to kill without reason or understanding. In the world of Caligari, the powerful sit on high perches and stand atop long, winding stairs, and the weak lie in their chains, surrounded by darkness. German film theorist and sociologist Siegfried Krauser went as far to say that the film's production and success was a reflection of the German society's subconscious need for a tyrant, and the film itself was a premonition of Hitler's rise to power. The film was an immediate influence on German cinema of the time, most notably films like M, Nosferatu, Der Golem, and Metropolis. Filmmakers at the time took to calling distorted scenography Caligariism. Thematically and tonally, it's probably one of the biggest influences on the horror genre. It can be seen as the first psychological horror film, predating Psycho by 40 years. The influence of Caligari on early horror can be seen immediately in films like Nosferatu and Frankenstein. It can later be seen in the works of David Lynch and Guillermo del Toro. It's echoed in the films of Tim Burton and Ridley Scott. The film's final twist, where Francis is revealed to be a madman in an insane asylum, is reflected in the psychoanalysis scene in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. Visually, the film went on to influence the look and feel of film noir. Shadows in Kiligari are of the utmost importance. In this shot, the shadows represent the helplessness and isolation of a man falsely accused of Caesar's murders. Similarly, shadows in film noir are used to represent alienation and distrust both big themes in Caligari. 
Compare the warped buildings in Caligari to the angled and distorted shots of Vienna in Carol Reed's The Third Man. The film also went on to influence the distorted perception and deep focus in Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. The cabinet of Dr. Kiligari lifted film from low entertainment to high art. If A Birth of the Nation was cinema's first blockbuster, then Caligari was cinema's first masterpiece. Thanks for watching 100 Years of Cinema. Let me know your favourite early horror film in the comments below, and subscribe so we can travel through the next 100 years of film together. If you're interested in adding The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari to your collection, I provided links below to where you can pick up the restored version on DVD, Blu-ray or direct download.